everybody. Welcome to San Francisco Ballet's Meet the Artist Conversation. I'm Jenny Scholick and I am your host for today's Meet the Artist Talk. For those of you here in San Francisco, you know that these conversations normally happen immediately before a performance in the War Memorial Opera House, but this year we've had to move so many things online, including these conversations. The conversation you're about to see was recorded in late April or early May when we conducted in-depth interviews with each of our newly promoted soloist and principal dancers. We hope that these conversations will give you some insight into their journey, their training, and how they've gotten to where they are. I hope you enjoy this conversation and thank you so much for your support of San Francisco Ballet. Thank you for joining us today. So nice to see you and so many congratulations on the promotion. We will come around to that. But before we get into everything, I'd love to just hear how are you? Where are you? How are you holding up in this kind of wacky time? Yeah, I got stuck here a little bit. But but yeah, I'm good. I don't know which day of, of the month is, which day of the week is, I don't know anymore. I guess I'm just going day by day and then just waiting to, you know, for the people to tell us that everything is better so we can start doing more like a normal life. But yeah, I'm just here. I, I live very close to the ballet. I live like three blocks away from the ballet. So yeah, so yeah, I'm just, yeah, San Francisco. Still. Yeah, at least I'm starting to have some good for, this is a pre-recorded podcast, so I can say we're, you know, in early May, I guess, and at least we're having some beautiful weather. I know, which... no, no, the weather is amazing, yeah. And, and, and that's nice, kind of, kind of a little scary, you know, because a lot of people are going outside. Now, I, I feel like uh, people kind of like forget about all this. So yeah. it, it's kind of it's good or bad because when I go outside also to walk, it feels like a normal, again, kind of, but it's kind of tricky, you know, because you come back home again, it's like, oh shit, it's like no normal again, you know, but, but, it, but it's, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I know one of the things you've been doing to stay busy in this time is coordinating a worldwide ballet class on Zoom and Instagram, yeah. which has been incredible to watch from the outside. But I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about how that started, what you've built there, what it is for audience that we don't know. Okay, of course. Yeah, so everything started because when they told us to set a place, it was on Monday, I think, the 16th, no? I think, of mm -hmm. So it was on Monday. And then, and because we didn't know how long we were gonna be at home, and everything. So that Tuesday, I on Wednesday, yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday, let me see, Tuesday, who? Yes, on, on that Tuesday, I text people from the from the company. You know, I'm like, you know, I heard about this application called Zoom, then we can all be together and stuff. Like, if you guys wanted to like maybe keep ourselves entertained, something, maybe I can teach you guys class, and then we can all be together. You know, and don't miss each other that much. So, so the, so we did that on Tuesday. I text everybody, and everybody said, yes, yes, of course, of course. And then uh, on Wednesday, I, we had the first class, but it, it was no worldwide ballet class. It was nothing. It was just like a group of people, you know, from the, from the company having fun. And then so I, I taught class on Wednesday and Thursday. And then after that, the company also find out the Zoom and stuff. So they, the company started doing their own, own classes as well. So for me, actually, that was, that was kind of better because in the beginning, I was thinking about just making San Francisco ballet as well and stuff. But because they make their own classes, I, that's when I thought, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to start maybe, you know, asking more people or my friends, you know, from Europe, my friends from other companies to, to join because the first class already, the second class already that we have, people already joined from PNB, uh, friends of friends of the company. And then and they were like, oh my God, this is amazing and stuff. So, so I asked Felipe to teach and Felipe was like, of course, and he, he taught class on Friday and then Ruben taught class on, sa on Saturday. Ruben. And so everybody loved it, yeah. Ruben yeah. Martin, that's for our uh, Ruben Martin, yes. Yeah. Felipe, Felipe Diaz, our, our ballet master. Uh, so everybody loved it and stuff. And then that's why I was like, you know what? I'm going to start making a little schedule for, for the next week, you know? So that was like week one of World Wild Ballet class. And then so that Sunday, you know, we, I talked to Ruben Martin and then he was like 100% in with me. You know, he's like, yeah, well, I will help you. He's like, of course, too, please, because he has a lot of contacts, you know? He's a ballet master now in Washington Ballet. So he just called Julie Ken. And Julie, hey, Julie, you want to teach? Of course, sure. Julie Ken taught class that week. And we have over 260 people that day in class. So that was, that was incredible. I, say, I was like watching that happen on Instagram. And it was so, you know, I'm like your age, right? So like, and so many dancers who were just like flipping out over yeah, the age. Yeah, that, that was like, yeah, 
yeah. was, a lot of people make their dream come true. You know, that's what I, that's what I was telling her. Even for me, you know, because you know, like I just be part of the class because I, I you know, like then my idea was everybody was doing this live Instagram thing, but like Instagram is like you need to be very I don't know determined. It's it's, it's not the same because you have the video there, but 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 you're not you're not part of the class. But right. because what I was thinking, I was like, guys, this is the best thing, Zoom, you know, because you're actually part of the class and you can ask questions to the teacher if you want. And then, you know, like that. So you actually feel more community and then all the best thing about it also, like, a lot of people start joining and then so you see friends that you haven't seen forever, you know, in class. You're like, oh my God, look at you, oh my God. So I feel like we brought a lot of people smile and then, start, and then yeah, so I, I thought like, so that weekend I opened the Instagram. I'm just gonna open an Instagram, why not? Because everybody is on social media now. And then so I opened an Instagram and then some people to see it more. And I started putting the photos of the teachers that we were having the, the next day and stuff. And after that, you know, we opened a, a website as well. I was like, let's try to make it more organized. So we opened a website and so we have everything now more organized. And, and yeah, so I, this one is the week seven already. <laughs> so everything went super, super fast. And then we have like teachers uh, for all over the world, really the best coaching that people can find, you know? So this is, a, this is our purpose, you know? It's not like a, uh, it's not like a superstar comes in, in teach class. Yeah, you know, like we could do that as well to get famous, but for me, it's more about not getting famous more. It's more about giving good coaching from people, you know? Because yeah. I think that will be like, that's my, my goal. And then all those people that, it's, it's kind of like a treat because for me also, I'm like, oh my God, I would like to take class with Felipe, with Ruben, with Christopher Stowe, with Jonah Berman, you know, like all these people that you never could have a chance to, you know. So I have to be very, very thankful for everybody because everybody who we've been texting, Ruben, Martin, and I, to coach, they saying yes right away. So I have to be like very thankful for everybody to, you know, they are part of this too because you know, of course, I, I did create idea and stuff, but if we wouldn't be also for Ruben Martin, it wouldn't be for all the Christopher Felipe, all the people that we have, we will never create it, you know, because if not, that would be just me taking class and then and people probably don't come, you know, so, so that's why. Hmm? That's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And, you know, it makes me, as I hear you talking about it, it makes me wonder, I mean, I know you just got a promotion. You're probably very focused on dancing, but does this make you think about what, you know, your life might look like when you're done with your dancing career. I mean, you're like pulling all these. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I have yeah. To be, yeah. Coaching, you're doing the social media. Like it just yeah. feels like such an interesting opportunity for you yeah. to be thinking really big right now. Yeah, but to be, you know, to be real, like, uh, you know, because this was my, my 15th season in the company. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of years, you know, that I was dancing in the company. And then, of course, um, I, I always like love to dance, you know. And then I, I was getting like really, really nice roles, you know. And then one point I was getting a little tired because I was doing sometimes probably the same thing over and over, you know, all those roles that I did when I was 18 years old, you know, and now I'm 33. So like, oh my God, I have to do this again. Of course, once you are on a stage, you have fun, you know, the rehearsal time is a little bit like boring and stuff sometimes. But, but for the past three or four years, you know, I've been dancing a lot. So I was really happy again. And then I'm just lucky, you know, that Helgi saw that and then I got promoted. But I, I always say that, I feel like every single person in this company could be a principal dancer, you know? Sometimes it is luck about the moment, about what Helgi needs, you know, about this. So, you know, but I feel like, you know, we have such a like amazing company that every single person can be a, a solid, a principal. So now it, it, it took me, you know, it's my, it was my turn. But, but you know, I, I, I was like thinking already ahead and do that transition. I don't know when was it. So I was already like, you know, doing my paella business, you know, okay. and I start and now this is like that too. But now that I'm, I'm a solist, maybe I keep dancing a lot more years. <laughs> <laughs> I had to see, I see. Years in here, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I always say that I don't want ballet to retire me. I mm -hmm. wanted to retire before ballet does it to me. So, you know, once my body, you know, stops saying, hey, man, you cannot dance anymore, I will probably, you know, stop or something. But I, now I'm just happy, you know, then. Also, I made it to, to Solis, you know, that, of course, that was a goal for, you know, for everybody, it's a goal. But for me, my, my goal was always be a dancer and enjoy every single year, you know. I never thought actually being a principal, being a team, so if it happened, happened. So if it happened, so I'm just, of course, very happy. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So I want to, you know, kind of on that topic, I want to go back all the way to the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, 
our audiences know you pretty well. I mean, it's been, I've been watching you since about 2006, but um, I'd, I'd love to just spend a little time talking about kind of your early training and how you first got into dance. What was sort of those early, early years like for you? Yeah. So my early years, so before I start dancing, I was playing soccer all my life. You can see this is my soccer team, Paragoza. <laughs> I was always playing soccer in Spain. And then I, I stopped playing soccer because the school was getting harder. So I was like, oh, man, I had to focus more on school. And then that was funny story. Like, I stopped soccer because of the school. And after I stopped school because of ballet, you know? So it was like, oh, maybe if I will stop school, I will, I will become a soccer player, you know? You never know. But, but yeah, so I, I was, one day, this is very funny. One day I was in, this, in the car with my mother. And then we saw a very line, a huge line of people. And then so like, oh, we stopped, it's like, oh, what is this? And there was like a, like an like American guest talent, guest talent, you know, like all these TV yeah. shows. It was like a Spain guy talent and okay. in my city. So I was like, oh my God, mom, mom I want to go. Because I, I, I love, I always love Michael Jackson and dance like him. I used to have all the videos and then, mom, I want to go. So I said, like, okay. So I stopped the quiz of the car and I got the cassette from the car and I, I went in line and I did the, the audition. And the, the, the person who did audition was like, oh, I can see that he has no idea how to dance. You know, but he, he loves to dance and he has the passion, but if he wants to become a dancer, he should start doing ballet because that's the, that's the base. How, how old were you at this point? I, I was uh, 11 years old, 12. Okay. Yeah, 11 to 12. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was like, okay, so I listened to her and then I, I did like one year in the conservatory in Faragoza. And after they say, I, and then from the first uh, day one, I love it. I was like, oh my God, mom, mom I wanted to do this, you know? And, and they probably and imagine me saying that because probably if they won, it was just like doing this with the foot, you know, it was probably really boring, you know, but I really like it. And then, so they told me that if you really wanted to become a ballet dancer, you have to go to Maria de Avila. So mm -hmm. it's a, a Lola's school. So yeah, I went there and then, yeah, I was there for like six, seven years. I had the honor to know Maria de Avila before she passed away. And then she, yeah, she did give me a lot of tips. And after that, uh, Lola's, Lola, the Avila took control of the school. So she was my teacher for six, seven years there, like, like that. <laughs> and then in 2004, San Francisco Ballet went to Paris, Paris to do the, the tour. And then so Lola de Avila talked to Helgi about me and stuff. So I went there and did the audition in Paris. And then, yeah, so that, that was how my story began. And after Helgi was like, ah, you look very young. So I was 18 years old there, 18 to 19. Yeah, so like, yeah, you're, you're very young still, but uh, we really want you. So come please one year to the school. So I did the, the trainee program in 2004. First year of the trainee program? I mean, the trainee program was brand new, yeah, right? Was, when you joined? Yeah, second year of the trainee program. Okay. Second year, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm have to say thank you, you know, to everybody because yeah, I went there and I had the scholarship. So I, probably one of, the, one of the reasons that I could come here because, you know, I don't come from a very, you know, a, health, health, uh, a lot of money family. So that was I, I was very good, you know, I had the Jackson house. So yeah, I was here one year and then that was that was it. And then I just stayed. I, I never thought about staying that many years. And then this is my 15 or 16 years already, so. Well, yeah, I was gonna ask that. Like, did you ever, you know, you've been here so long, you came in through the school. Did you ever think about going somewhere else or yeah. were you? I'm in San Francisco, this is what I want. Yeah, the thing is, like, I never look about my future that much, you know, because I don't want to make uh, ideas and it after no, no happen and get sad, something like that. So I always, like, go day by day, kind of, for my life. And then, but yeah, I, I was just, one year I try, and I, I, I think I have to say, I got super lucky about the people that I, I found here as a friend. And mm -hmm. then I think without them, for sure, I couldn't be here. Like, I have to say always, I always say, Gaetano Amico, he was a dancer from the company. He retired, I think, three years ago. He was like my, my brother here, you know, like I had to like give everything to him because he really helped me. I came here, I didn't know any English, nothing. So I remember, so I, uh, you know, and a lot of people helped me. He helped me a lot. And I remember like being in the, in the room in Jackson House. I used to live with Daniel Divison. He's still in the company. And another guy called Michael Wagley. So we used to live in the same room and I didn't speak any English. Good thing that Daniel is from Brazil, so he spoke a little. So we speak, speaking a lot of Portuguese and stuff. And this guy, Michael Wagley, we were in the computer. I was typing everything in Spanish. Pum, 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 pum. I saw it to him, like, ha, 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 right in English. But like, oh, yeah. So that was my conversation for like one year almost. But yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had two kind of big transitions right away, right? Like the transition here, trainee program, learning English, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, right into the company, right into the core mm -hmm. ballet, which can also be a really kind of challenging transition. Did you find it hard at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah of, of course. Uh, I find it super hard. I don't know how many people know this, but I'm going to say it. I, I, I find it really hard. And then also, you know, of, of course, Helgi is very like... Uh, and no, 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 scary, but he's very really like, I don't know the word now. When you see him, like, oh my God, hell is here, you know? So, uh, at MF Trends, I didn't know in English. My, my first two years, when we used to do the rehearsals on stage, you know, he always speak with the microphone, you know? So, mm -hmm. hey, move right, left, uh, up stage or whatever. So, I remember trying to do the things, everything perfect. Like, please don't say anything to me because I won't understand anything. And then, I, and then I, it was embarrassing, you know? So, I was, I was like, please don't say my name. So, that was one of the things I was always very scared about yeah. uh, doing the, the rehearsals on stage and him talking to me. I was like this. But, but yeah, no, it was, the, the, the change was hard because also like to learn such a different ballets than I never learned before, like Balanchine. It was like very, very hard for me. And then because all the counting and stuff, I never danced like that before. So it took me a very long time to get it. Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, experience and stuff. I was lucky that I knew a lot of people already from, from Lola's school. Like Ruben, uh, Moises, Dores, Gonzalo. So I knew a lot of people. So, you know, they took me and like, I could speak Spanish to them, you know, a little bit. So it, it wasn't as hard than I thought. The hardest thing, of course, was leaving my, my family and my little brother. Because my little brother was five years old when I moved. I know. So, right? And it's an answer, yeah. He's in Atlanta Ballet. Uh, he was there for, for two years with Gennady. And now he's going to Tulsa Ballet for next season. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. Yeah. I think I always think it's so interesting how dancing kind of seems to run in families, right? Like okay. once mm -hmm. starts, feels mm -hmm. like then you know there's like kind of a whole group yeah. that they follow. Um, I feel like you know I said I've been watching you since you first joined the company, um, and you've always had you know beautiful technique, really explosive dancer. And I feel like you got some really early opportunities mm -hmm. to kind of have some breakout moments. Mm -hmm. What are some of those that you remember as being kind of special for you? Oh, yeah. So of course, you know, like my, my first years I did, I remember my first year I did because we were doing a Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. And then, so I did the Paddy Six. So that was like a very, very huge deal for me. And that was one of the, I think the, the first opportunities that, that Helgi gave me. And the other year, the second year, you know, it was the Padre, no, it was Padre 6 for his beauty and the Padre 5 for Giselle also. Mm -hmm. In that second year. And stuff. But yeah, no, every, I, I just take everything, you know, very, like, like opportunity, you know, like I, I feel like sort of, I don't dancers forget when you become in, in the top, you know, like San Francisco Ballet, you forget that you're there and that you kind of like want more. Of course, you always want more, but for me, it was always very, well, I was always very happy already make it here. So every, every opportunity, I was taking it like my last opportunity, you know? And I, I was never doing those opportunities to get promoted, you know? I was just doing that to prove myself and I could do it, make the audience enjoy, you know? And then, so I always try to do that communication more than make it in my yeah. career, but, you know? I mean, I was, I was thinking about your career and preparing for this interview and, you know, I teach a lot in the school and I've been chatting with the students a lot. Um, you know, teach dance history with them. And, you know, looking at someone like you, it's like you spent 15 years in the court ballet mm -hmm. and you had that kind of stamina and duration to do that. And then you did get this, just get this position. Do you feel like it was that mindset that, you know, it's always about the now, it's always about like this opportunity and focusing on it that let you add and let you kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they go, how I was saying that, I, I think that maybe like, three or four years ago, you know, I, I lost hope. You know, of course, you have always hope, you know. When, when you're doing, like, a two good seasons about dancing, like that, you, of course, you have hope. Oh, maybe this year it happened, you know, and then you see all the people getting promoted, you see, and then you're like, oh, my God, it's not going to happen, you know, to me anymore. So I kind of lost hope about it. And, uh, and you know what? Some, sometimes when you dance, what I say, more for yourself and more to make people enjoy, you dance better, you know. So I feel like the past four years, I danced the best I ever danced because I didn't have any... I didn't have to prove anything to, to Helgi anymore, you know, because he's 
I, I was here already for so many years, like Helge, you know how I dance, you know? So, you know, and then, and then of course he always loved me because if not, I won't ever be here for 15 years, you know? But, but yeah, I, I think that, and then I, I, you know, I always, I think this promotion probably is good for, of course it's good for me, but I think it's good for the young kids, you know, that they're coming up to see that it's not because you're doing one good part, you're gonna get promoted. You know, like also you, you have to do what you love. If you do what you love, if it happens, will happen. If not, if don't, don't cry. But because at the end of the, 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 the time, you know, the career is very short. So you have to be always enjoy what, you know, what you have because yeah, and that's what I think because I'm very free now. Of course, I'm not old, but for ballet, I'm getting kind of there. So for me, I'm just, I told Helgi, the, you know, the last four years, I'm like, Helgi, you know, I just wanted to enjoy my last years of career. You know, I don't know how many more years, I want to like enjoy and stuff. And if you give me opportunities, I will take them as much as I can, you know? But yeah. And of course I was young and stupid as well when I was 21, 22. So, so maybe this promotion will happen before if I will be more serious, but you know, it's, it's life experience and then you learn from your mistakes as always and stuff, so, you know, and then I wouldn't be the person I am right now if I wouldn't pass for, you know, all my life, so. Yeah, so how did you find out about the promotion? Can you tell us? Oh yeah, so it was today, so it was like last two Sundays uh, ago, because yeah, I, I don't know which day, so the 20 or the 19 or something like that, 18 or something of, of uh, April. Yeah, so I, I, because Helgi called us the second week, of, of the Celtic and Press, he called everybody on the phone saying, you know, he was very nice saying, how are you guys doing? How is this, you know, please be safe. And I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty good. You know, he actually, you know, cares about us and stuff. And then when he called me again, he called me and then he called me on FaceTime. I was like, oh my God. He said, oh, he, he, finally, he finally knows what is FaceTime, no? So he was like, eh. and then I just thought that he was gonna ask again another round to, you know, to dancers how we are and stuff. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing very good. And actually I was having a beer at the time. Like, I'm having a beer right now. Yeah, I'm doing good and stuff. And, and then, yeah, and then after he's like, yeah, yes, you know, I have a very good news for next season for you. And so when he said that to me, I'm like, oh my God. And then he just told me, yeah, I just wanted you to be a solid for next year. And then I, you know, sometimes I can see sometimes that you goof around, but all the times you get very serious, you know, I'm like, of course I get serious when I get good parts, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, like that. So, and, and it's like, yeah, I want you to like, you know, be elevation dance for me as a solid for next year. Like, oh, thanks, man. And for me, it was a big deal because, you know, like, also, like, I was saying, like, I don't even know how many more years I was going to be dancing. So now, at least, my last years, I will maybe enjoy a little bit more. I already enjoy, but, you know, I will enjoy more. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, you're sort of hinting at it, but I think for all of us, it was such nice, like, this whole round of promotions were kind of like, you know, you're, you've all spent, all of you have spent time in the school, all of you have been in the company, a, you know, good while, like, it was nice for morale for everyone, I yeah. think. Just yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Really get rewarded, you know, not yeah. that it's not for people, but just, it was, it, in this kind of crazy time, so nice to see members of the company who've put so much in over so many years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and that's what I was saying, like, I think for the for young people from the company, you know, like uh, for the last, you know, four years, maybe Helgi, you know, was giving, for, for my opinion, uh, he was like doing uh, some promotions that they were very soon, you know, cause you know, being for me in the company that many years, I feel like you needed to like, maybe like do other more than ballet boom, to get promoted. And he was just promoting people, you know, like very fast. So I, I was feeling that the young people coming to the company, they were thinking that it was gonna be like that for everybody. You know, they were thinking, oh my God, yeah, I'm gonna do this part. And then, and then so I, I told them, you know, like, guys, <laughs> chill out, you know, love it and enjoy because it's not gonna happen, you know? And then, so, because it happened to me, it's, it's good for, for them to never lose hope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's just, it's great. It's really awesome. So uh, you were saying, you said you said to help me, you know, yeah, when I, when I have great parts to do, I can buckle down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got to do some really fun parts this season. It was a short season, of okay. course, but I'd love to chat a little bit about a few of them. I've pulled out a few little highlights. Um, you got to return to the part of Benjamin yeah. in Cinderella. Um, how long have you been doing that part? Since the beginning of so, that? Oh, yeah, so second, second year, because the first year I was in Europe. So okay. I, I, I couldn't do it. 
But yeah, ya second year, yeah, I did it. Yeah, and then also in, in, in tour too. I think it was in Washington, yeah, Washington DC. I did it too, and then in here twice again. Yeah, that's one of, one of my favorite parts. Yeah. How many different, I mean, I feel like over the years you must have performed it with many different Clementines and oh, yeah. many yeah. Yeah. How is it different when you get like a new partner or a new prince? Because that it's such an acting role. Yeah, it is. Oh, uh, my, my, my first uh, year, I, th I think I did it with uh, Carlos Kennedy. So, you know, it, once you have a very good connection, you know, with people, if you are really your friends, you can actually, the audience can see it for sure, you know, and like, oh my God, these guys, yeah, like, th there is no fake in there. Right, so, you're happy. You know, yeah, doing it with friends, of course, you know, it helps. But I feel like, you know, I'm lucky that I, I'm very good friend of everybody. So it is easy for me to dance with everybody. This year I did with Julia Rowe and then and Jana. Mm -hmm. I did the Clementine and then the, the stepsisters. And that was very fun too, because, you know, I know them for a long time. So, and, it's, yeah, and Carlo Villano, so it was very funny to do with him. But yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then um, Concerto Grosso came back around. Oh, yeah. Guess, yeah. The original cast of that? Am I? No, almost, almost, almost. Because when I was in the school, I think that's when Helgi created. Okay. And then, so the next year when I joined the company, I, I started learning it. But I, I did it my first time in 2008. And then, it was, and that was the second cast of Jaime Garcia Castilla. Uh -huh. That was the second cast for that. And then we, we did that for, for the gala in Chicago, as I still remember. And then Jaime, uh, unlucky, you know, he, he got injured. You know, so, so I have to do it for the for that gala in Chicago. And then uh, it was my, my thing, and so I was like freaking out. Like, oh my God, it's a really big role. So, so I did it, and I had like special rehearsals. I feel like Helgi and, and Ashley with at that time, they were freaking out. It's like, oh shit, you know, this guy is too young for this. Or, right, so, you were like 20 years old or something. Right, so I was like, I was like, yeah, 20, 21, yeah. And then so, so yeah, I did, that was my first time did Concerto Grosso. So yeah, 12 years. So they, yeah. Um, what has it been like kind of coming back to that part over and over? I mean, I have to imagine at this point you're doing it with a cast that's completely different yeah. than like the cast you first did it with in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, I always love to dance the, the piece. You know, I, I was saying like a, coming from the core for 15 years, you know, when you get that chance to perform like those roles, you enjoy it. That, you know, for me, you know, uh, 15 years I'm doing seguidillas. Of course, you know, I, I like to do that, but you know, like doing all these parts that I will say they are not that important, but they are important. But you know, when you come to do something like you have a solo and stuff, so for you, you feel more like a dancer, you know, again. Mm -hmm. So every time I do Concerto Grosso, it's a huge opportunity for me, huge, huge. And then I also learn both two parts. So it's nice when I do uh, both parts. Yeah, but I remember, still one cast that we did in New York in 2008, because we did in Chicago in New York. And that was uh, Gennady did the red guy, uh, Taras Domitro uh, did the blue guy, Daniel Divison did the green guy, and uh, Isaac Hernandez did the other blue, and I did the, the purple one. So, so that cast for me was amazing because I, I used to hang out with, with Daniel, Taras, and Isaac every day, because yeah. I, I, I live with Taras and, and Isaac and Daniel all my life pretty much so for for us that special moment on stage was was incredible you know we were like oh my god we, here we are all together dancing so i think that was probably one of the best concert of grosso that i did that one and the one from pascal's uh, retirement mm -hmm. that was also very very special the oh that's great that's great um you mentioned that you've done a lot of seguidillas in yeah. your are there any um, like corps de ballet roles that you either are going to really miss doing or that you're like, I'm really happy I never have to step uh, on stage? That know, I, I, that's what I, I, don't, I don't know because I, 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 I thought about all this, you know, before and stuff, but, but because I've been 15 years doing the same things, you know, of course I'm going to miss it. Eh? I'm not kidding. You know, may, maybe I don't miss the, the rehearsals. Time, you know, because the gun is low and it's like, I know this for 15 years, I don't need to do that many rehearsals, you know. Maybe I don't miss that part, but I for sure will miss being on stage with my, with my friends, you know. Also, it was, it was a little different now because all the people that I have in the court, they were all getting so solid, so principal or leaving. So I, I wasn't having that many, like, my buddies in the court anymore. So it was maybe a little harder to be on stage because it was just still, you know, maybe Sean Bennett, 
a lot of people, you know, but it was not that many people that we before, you know. So that's probably why it was one of the things that I was getting more sad. like, oh my God, all my friends are leaving, French friends, you know, for the court. But of course, I'm gonna miss doing seguidillas, and then I'm gonna miss the next year we're doing Swan Lake if we can dance. Oh, I hope so. Uh, chardas, you know, chardas. I, I did chardas when I was in the school, you know. Ah. So of course, I, I like to do all those parts because I, I like to enjoy and then ah, you know, and then. So it's gonna be a different season for me, for sure because of not doing all that and maybe not being together with that many people on, you know, in the studio because, you know, the core is bigger, so you're always around people. So I don't know, yeah. I will see whatever we start, I will figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, one that, you know, the soloist men are in there as uh, sort of as part of the core always is Sandpaper Ballet, which you oh, got yeah. to come back. Mm-hmm. I mean, you must have been one of, I mean, there were a handful of people who did it the mm-hmm. last time around. But not, I mean, it was, it was new to a lot of the Yeah, company. it was, yeah. I would say maybe we were like five people left for, for that, for that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you and... Yeah, like, me, Doris, <laughs> yeah. And Jennifer, Stoll, Daniel, yeah. probably, and then, yeah, well, I think I, I, yeah. Will, I, will, I will call the day there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What was that one? That one just looks like so much fun. It is. It is. It is, is super it? fun. Yeah. 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 Every, every ballet from Mac Morris is, is a blast to do it because he is a super musical. You know, mm-hmm. so once you get his musicality when you're dancing, it is super enjoyable dancing Mac Morris ballet. And also, he, he's an interesting guy. If, if you do, if you respect, respect him as a person, of, of course, you have to respect him. You know, he's Mac Morris. But, you know, you learn everything, he, he's good. But if not, sometimes it can be very, very tricky with you and can say things to you like, oh, shit, like that. But, but he's amazing. I, I love him and I love working with him for one of the reasons that he doesn't care about ranking. You know, for, yeah. him, for him, the company is all, everybody's the same thing. So for me, like, uh, being in the club for 15 years, for, uh, that, it was amazing. You know, he used, he would come in and then, hey, he, 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 when, we, when we did Bo, he put, I remember, he put Sean Bennett, he was an apprentice, as a first cast in front of Joan Boada. For example, you know, so these things, only him can do it. You say, hey, I don't care what you say. If you don't want to be my ballet, you can tell me, I don't want to be your ballet. So that's one of the things I love about him, that is him and then, but yeah, no, some paper ballet is amazing. It's, yeah. it's super, super funny. Who are some, so, I mean, I know you've worked with Mark Morris on some creations you mentioned, Bo. Who are some other kind of highlight choreographers for you who you've gotten to create work yeah. with? You, you know, like, maybe I, I'm not that lucky, lucky that I haven't, you know, say like me in the core, maybe other choreographers, you know, talk to Heavy and they choose more like principal dancer, you know, over, over the core. But I, I, was the, I was very lucky about working with Foresight when we did Pop Arts. That was actually like one of my, my highlights career, you know, because, you know, of course I was in the core and I was the only one, you know, being in the, in the cast, being in the core and, you know, I don't and then, so that was one of the things working with him, he really believed in me. So also one of the things about dancers, if you have a person who believes in you, you, you dance better, you know, there is something mentally, it's amazing, you know, how, how much he was involved with me and then I was like, oh my God, I actually can, can dance, you know, because sometimes, you know, being in a in company, sometimes when you, when you don't get roles or when, you know, you see the people moving forward and on you, you know, you, you also, you believe that you are not good enough, you know, sometimes. So it's good to, you know, have people like that that come and then, so that's why the company is good because they keep bringing people. And, you know, of course, uh, Yuri Posokov, yeah, we did a lot of Yuri Posokov creation. He's one of the best. I love him. And, yeah, uh, and you've done a lot of Yuri's ballets over the years. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like everything much, yeah. right? One of the best creations for me, for him, oh, all of them, but a uh, swimmer. So I think we will do that next season. And swimmer creation was amazing. The, his idea was like, it's, it's not going to work. He was like having so many ideas. He's like, oh, we're going to put this. Step. I'm like, to Yuri, man, what the hell is in your mind? It's not. And then after, you know, for some reason, he always had so many things in his mind, and then at the end of the day, he put everything together. But the last day, always. It's always the dress rehearsal. It's, it's the day that we, we put everything together. So it is very fun working with him and very challenged. And then yeah, I think Swimmer, it was amazing. And then that last part of all the guys on white, that was probably one of the 
Vespas a nivel dance eh, en este ya. Wonderful. Um, so, kind of back to the 2020 season, we were cut short. Um, the last show was midsummer on that fateful Friday evening. Yeah. Um, but that morning, you had gotten the chance to perform the role of Puck in the student matinee. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that role and that opportunity? Yeah. For you? No, yeah, I was, you know, in the beginning when I was casting, you know, I was already happy, you know, because they like, you know, when, when I cast of something important, I'm like, oh, yes, finally, you know, something. So see my name there, but we were five or six packs. We were a lot of packs. So like, oof, you know, it's going to be high, you know, they probably didn't put the principles, you know, on the solids first than us. So I was very, but, you know, I, I worked, you know, my ass off, kind of. I, I was working in the, in the character also. We were very lucky about Sandra Jennings because uh, she was very also into Pac and Felipe too. So they give us like notes about the, the character, all the counts, because it, it, it's a lot of entrances. And I feel like Pac is the most important actually uh, role in, in summer. Yeah. Together, there's no ballet with them, no, no, no. right? So, so you have to be very aware of the music, and then if you miss one entrance or you do something wrong with the flower, you screw up the whole story. So <laughs> it, it was a little, it was a little stressful, you know, in the beginning. To know, it's like, oh my god, I, I hope I remember all my entrances. But but you know, it was very very fun. All the makeup, everything was fun. And then and because uh, when they say that I was like, oh, we have five. And then for me, I was just thinking like, I only want to do the, the student matinee. I'm happy because I, I love to do the student matinees. Other people don't like them because it's too early, but I, I love it because I feel like when you dance, of course, people are quiet, you know, more. but when you dance for the kids, they are real. <laughs> if they have to laugh, they laugh. If they have to cry, if they have to tell you your sack, they will tell you. So it, it, I, I love dancing for them. And I was like, oh my God, this role will be perfect to do it for the kids, you know? And then when they told me I was doing that show, I was the happiest, the happiest person. So yeah, and it, it was, I, I really enjoyed doing it. And then it was, it was hard, more about mentally, about being super focused about all the entrances. But, but yeah, I, I didn't screw up, so good. <laughs> well, and hopefully, you know, we know that's coming back next year, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope so. Yeah, and I, I was lucky that I, I could do it, you know, because a lot of people, you know, because they cancel it. I think right. Lonnie, I think Lonnie and Lucas, they were the, the only two packs that they, they couldn't do it because of the, yeah, the virus. Yeah, it kind of, you never quite think of the student matinee as being one of the only, like, yeah. two or three. I know, I was, I, was the, I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, good, because it, it, the day that they told us, that was the Friday, you know, they went, you know, after the show, we had a meeting with Helgi, with everybody, you know, and then people were crying and stuff. And then I, I, I completely understand everybody, you know, but I was happy, you know, because I did it. You know, like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm not going to show my emotions now because people will kill me. But I was, like, I was like, oh, wow, you know, at least I was very lucky that I had a chance to perform it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So you mentioned that you enjoy doing the student matinees, and I think you can see that from the audience. You yeah. can really tell you're one of the people who really performing for that audience um and you've also you you know you're doing worldwide ballet class but you've been teaching a lot oh, yeah. as well do you enjoy like, and more generally do you enjoy working with kids do you really enjoy teaching like what how do you think about that part yeah. of what you yeah so yeah I'm, i was lucky that uh, yeah patrick asked me to, to teach i think like two years ago already for the summer and stuff and then yeah so i, I was teaching for the kids and i, I always like to teach but I, I like it more now because I feel like I have more knowledge than before. So I can maybe transmit more stuff than I know to, to them. But, but yeah, yeah, I've been teaching kind of like whenever Patrick, uh, Patrick Arman, you know, director for the school, uh, needs a teacher. You know, he takes me, Diego, can you do this day? Like, of course, because the classes are like at 9.30. So for mm -hmm. me, it's good too. So I do the class for the kids. And, I, and then one of the things I like also is doing the class with them sometimes because all my emotions that I feel doing the class, I told them, hey guys, oh, I got this leg here. Okay, try to do that too. So, you know, but I, I, I do like that because I like to pass. I don't want to keep anything for myself, you know? I, I, I don't know, that's one of my things. Everything I have, I like to share because it would be stupid to have it for yourself. It's boring. So uh, everything that I learn about dancing or everything that I learn about life, I try to, when I teach, you know, make it then, told them like it's no, that hard, you know, ballet, ballet is hard, but you know, you have to make it fun. That's the, the thing. Mm -hmm. 
So kind of on that note, I have one last question and then I'll let you get back. You've got, I know I can hear your worldwide ballet class happening. Yeah, I know it's, uh, but, but it's okay because uh, Ruben Martin is uh, doing it now. But yeah, we, we have another class now. It's actually now it's uh, Raymond Tilton is teaching. Oh, in the yeah, he's doing like an intermediate class because we have two classes now a day, three classes a day. We have the intermediate beginners class 930 and the 1130 is more like a professional in advance. And now we, we add, from last week, we add like a contemporary class and workshops and, and point classes as well. Right. So, yeah, so today we have Julie Ken later and Catherine Barkman teaching point class later. So. That's so awesome. It's, I mean, it's so cool what you've built in the last seven weeks. Yeah. Kind of on that on that note, you know, we're in this super weird time. Um, if you had a little advice for someone who's listening to this, or a student maybe who's listening to this podcast mm -hmm. about how to, you know, survive, thrive in this moment, what would you say to them? What would you give as advice? Yeah, well, you know, I, I don't think I'm the, the right person though, to give advice, but I, I, I would just, you know. I'm just thinking about going day by day, and then I'm thinking about that this is gonna be over soon. I don't think this is gonna last forever, hopefully. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, my mind is just moving forward now, and then thinking of going on a stage soon, working, you know, again, seeing my friends. That's for me is one of the most things that I miss the most, is hanging out with my, my friends. And I hope I can see my family. But for them, it's keep, keep moving, because moving is the most important, actually. I was, last week, I, I didn't take any classes because I'm in front of the computer, you know, uh, controlling the class and stuff. So I was feeling that all down. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? And then on Saturday and yesterday, I, I took class and then, and then I, I feel again alive, you know, like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm a dancer again. So that's what we are, you know, we are dancers. So I feel like people should keep moving and, like, you know, you, you feel better for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for taking some time this week chat with me congratulations yeah, thank again. You. and this was really fun for me and i hope mm -hmm. not too yeah. painful yeah it was for me too yeah thank you very much i appreciate it though